The concept behind the Ackley improved cartridges, especially the rimless bottleneck cartridges, and this is as Ackley defined it, you must be able to shoot the factory standard cartridge in the improved chamber, have it fire form into this configuration with the larger diameter of the shoulder and the sharper shoulder angle. You can see the contrast between the two. In order to do that, the chamber must be shallower than it would be for the standard cartridge. Because of the amount of collapse at the shoulder that occurs, as we've demonstrated, I hold the chambers a little bit shallower than even the, the minus four thousandths that Ackley preferred. And in the process then, I actually have the cartridge sticking out more than the barrel to frame gap measures. Now recall, the barrel to frame gap measurement on this barrel is five thousandths. This factory standard cartridge was protruding from the end of the barrel nine thousandths. This preformed nozzler case was protruding from the end of the barrel eight thousandths. Three thousandths more than the barrel to frame gap measures. So even if you're starting with this new nozzler case, it's going to be a little bit too long in the body. We need to be able to bump those shoulders back so that when you close the barrel on the case, when you're loading for accuracy and function, that you're not jamming that case in and up in the chamber. Most dies are made so that the shoulder in the die is too far forward, cannot reach the shoulder of the case. Most dies have to be shortened approximately 20 thousandths in order for this to occur. By taking material from the end of the, the die, and move the entire die down in the press, enabling the shoulder inside the die to push the shoulder of the case back. Let's go size this case and see if it will in fact allow this case to go into the chamber and not protrude more than the 5 thousandths barrel to frame gap measurement. I've installed the 280 Ackley improved size die, full length resize, into the press to the point where contacting the shell holder, just camming over. I'm going to resize this new nozzler case that we've shown protrudes from the chamber eight thousandths with a barrel to frame gap of five. It actually protrudes three thousandths too much. We need to be able to push the shoulder back, so we're going to see if this die will move that shoulder at all. The case has been lubed. Let's go try it in the chamber, see how far it protrudes. Let's see how far the size case protrudes from the barrel now. Still at approximately eight thousandths. <clears throat> it has not bumped the shoulder back. If it were bumped back, we need to have it back to the five thousandths mark, equal to the barrel to frame gap measurement. So that die will have to be shortened in order to contact the shoulder. We have the die set up in the lathe. We're going to face 20 thousandths off the end of the barrel. Because of the hard case hardening surface on the inside and outside, I'm going to break through a little bit from this side. I'll reset my tool. Now I'm going to zero out on the end of the die. Set my indicator on the lathe down here. Zero it. Now I'm going to start from the inside so if it has a tendency to, to chip the case hardening, it'll chip it to the outside. Start with a 5,000 cut. This is the final cut at 20,000. Now we have to clean up the mess that we made. Get the metal chips out of the inside because we're going to go in with emery paper a short distance. Got a wrap of um, 400 grit emery paper on a, a slotted pistol cleaning rod for what that's worth. 
going to chamfer the mouth of the die. You see we get a polished edge coming up here. Don't want any sharp burrs to scrape brass on the case. Nice and smooth. Now we'll clean all of the residue out of the inside just in case there's any abrasive left from the emery paper. We'll clean it out, we'll lightly lube the inside of the die, and then we'll go try it again. I've installed the shortened size die in the press. I'm back to where I'm camming over again. I'm going to back it off, oh, roughly about a half a turn. Run that same case back in. I don't feel any camming over at the shoulder. There I can feel it touching the shoulder. I can still see a gap between the bottom of the die and the, and the top of the shell holder. Okay, there we've got a good firm feel. Let's go ahead and cam it over. It wasn't much. We want to make sure it'll push the shoulder back. Let's go a little bit more. There we are. Let's go measure it. See how far it protrudes from the end of the barrel. Indicator shows we've pushed the shoulder back two thousandths, from eight down to six. We had a little room to go, so I'm going to go ahead and bump the shoulder just a little bit more, make sure we can get down to that five thousandths protrusion or less. I bumped the shoulder back a little bit more. Let's see how far it protrudes. There we are at taking the high point, two thousandths. Barrel to frame gap is five. The case is protruding two thousandths. It means we have three thousandths head space. So you have the capability of pushing the shoulder back now with that die. We've gone through the process of measuring the head space. We've demonstrated how much the case shoulder collapses, both with the factory standard 280 cartridge versus what you get with the sharper shoulder, which is next to nothing for collapse at the shoulder. And we've demonstrated what's necessary to shorten the size die so that it can push that shoulder back, bearing in mind that the chamber must be cut shallow enough to be a firm fit on the shoulder of the standard factory parent cartridge. If you can't bump the shoulder back, then your case is going to stick out of the chamber too far. When you close the frame on it, it's going to be jamming the case in and up in the chamber, and it tends to cause all kinds of accuracy problems. And of course, if it sticks out too far, you can't cock the hammer because the barrel isn't locking up all the way. You've seen the process. You can see how simple it is. It's just a matter of taking the measurement and then noticing what's done in the process. The key to everything pertaining to the break open guns, in my opinion, as I've clearly demonstrated, it's the Belm Headspace Indicator. It is the easiest, quickest, most accurate way to take those measurements so that you can track what is going on in your Encore Contender or G2 with your frame and its particular hinge pin hole location, your barrel with its depth of chamber, and your ammunition with whatever dimensions are produced. Or, if you don't reload, what dimensions are produced by the factory cartridges, the factory ammo that you buy. We'll next get into showing how to correct the head space if it is excessive using a shim, a set of shims from Belm TCs.